today I'm going to new another D&D 5e build but before we get to the build um, I wanted to talk about the the point of this build and uh, um, some one of the great things about D&D &D that kind of goes along with this build um, a while back I wanted to have a guy that only summons bugs but I know that the Conjure Animal spell has the DM choose what kind of animals get summoned. And I wanted to create a summoner. And so I sat down and we worked out a bunch of the rules for the summoning. And one of the, my questions that I asked is, is um, if I used the Conjure Animals, would you only allow me to summon bugs? Um, to which I got a reply from my DM, um, why limit yourself like that? Um, what he told me is to do is flavor all of the animals on the summoning chart, make him a chart, so that way we don't have to um, worry, have him worry about what animals are summoned. We'll just make it random, put some animals on the chart, keep all of their same stats and everything about them except for their flavor, what they look like, and make them all bugs. And so, and the animals, their abilities haven't changed, just what they look like and the flavor is different, and basically all of the animals can fit into my build that I wanted to make, and I can roll the storyline that he came from some monstrous island that has gigantic bugs like, like, uh, um, in the movies where they have a, a kind of like a land of the lost or a King Kong or some place like that where they had giant mutant bugs and so he summons bugs to fight for him and so I drew up a chart um, I made some concessions with the DM I'm not going to summon you know dozens of creatures and ruin the action economy <laughs> um, because uh, it would be better off to just summon the creatures let them fight if they all get killed, summon some more. I mean, it's just a spell slot. So it, uh, instead of like ruining the action economy, actually going back and just summoning only you know between eight and twelve at a time. So that way, I don't break the game with with uh, you know you know thirty summon creatures. Also, um, another concession. Um, my question is, if the conjure animal is going to be random, if I'm 60 feet up in the air or 100 feet up in the air, and I summon a bunch of creatures, um, are they all going to fall to their death? They're random, so we split the chart into ground, um, aquatic, and flying, and so you can only summon the creature whenever you're in that kind of environment so that you don't summon a bunch of bears uh, underneath the water and they all drown and die or something like that so basically we worked out all the bugs I created a chart and whenever I summon the spell I just take the dice and roll the dice and the number on the dice matches what I get on the chart and uh, I keep the stats and the DM doesn't have to keep up with all of the mess and it runs smoothly so today we're going to do the D&D 5e build called the Bug Summoner. So far as build strategy, it's going to be group support and summon melee damage. So far as classes, I chose the Circle of the Shepherd Druid to 6th level and the Conjuration Wizard to the 14th level. So far as wraith, race, I chose the Gith Gizari. For racial traits, um, I pick up plus one to intelligence, plus two to charisma. A mental discipline, which uh, you have advantage on saving throws against being charmed or frightened. Um, the Githzari Psionics, it gives you um, an invisible mage hand to start out. Also, it gives you the ability to cast shield once per long rest at a later level. And then even at an even later level, it gives you the ability to cast detect thoughts once per long rest. So far as important abilities for the Circle of the Shepherd Druid, um, at the first level we pick up Druidic. Um, we learn the secret language of the Druids. For the second level, we gain Wild Shape. You can use your action to magically assume the shape of an animal you have seen before. You can use this twice per short rest. Um, our beast shapes are going to be um, at the second level, CR 1 fourth, no flying or swimming speed animals. Um, at the fourth level, we get a boost to that. We get CR 1 half and no flying speed animals. And um, we're not going to get the, the eighth level boost because we only took this to the sixth level. 
Um, at the second level, we gain Speech of the Woods. You learn to speak, read, write, and Sylvan. In addition, beasts can understand your speech, and you gain the ability to decipher their noises and motions. Most beasts lack the intelligence to convey or understand sophisticated concepts, but the friendly beast could relay what it has seen or heard in the recent past. This ability doesn't grant you any special friendship with the beast, though you can combine this ability with gifts to curry favor with the beast. Um... At the second level, Spirit Totem. As a bonus action, you can magically summon a spirit to a point that you can see within 60 feet of you. The spirit creates an aura in a 30-foot radius around that point. As a bonus action, you can move the spirit up to 60 feet. The spirit lasts for one minute or until you're incapacitated. You can use this feature once every short rest. The effect of the spirit's aura depends on the type of spirit you summon. Um, First off is the bear spirit. Each creature of your choice in the aura when the spirit appears gains temporary hit points equal to 5 plus your druid level. Also, you and your allies gain advantage on strength checks and strength saving throws. Hawk spirit. When a creature makes an attack roll against a target in the spirit's aura, you can use your reaction to grant advantage to the attack roll. Also, you and your allies have advantage on wisdom perception checks while in the aura. Um, the Unicorn Spirit, you and your party gain advantage on all ability checks made to detect creatures in the Spirit's Aura. Also, if you cast a spell with a spell slot that restores hit points to anyone inside or outside the Aura, each creature in the Aura also regains hit points equal to your Druid level. Uh, more than likely, we're probably going to be using Bear Spirit the majority of the time, unless we need to gain advantage or we have... Um, a creature that we need to detect. Um, we get at the fourth level our wild shape improvement, and that gives us CR one half creatures to wild shape into, and with no flying speed. At the sixth level, we are we gain the ability mighty summoner. Any fey, any beast or fey summoned or cr created by your spells has its hit point maximum increased by two per hit die and the damage from its uh, natural weapons is considered magical for the purposes of overcoming immunity and resistance to non-magical attacks and damage. Um, basically um, we're going to be giving our creatures and the party uh, temporary hit points and we're going to be summoning a lot of bugs to take hits for the party. Um, next for the conjuration wizard um, for the we get our spell book at the first level the spellbook contains six first level wizard spells. Also at the first level we gain arcane recovery. Once per day, whenever you finish a short rest, you can recover spell slots equal to or less than half of your wizard level rounded up. Also at the second level we gain Conjuration Savant, the golden time that you spend to copy the spells of Conjuration spells into your spellbook is halved. Also at the second level, Minor Conjuration, you can use your action to conjure up an inanimate object in your hand or on the ground in an unoccupied space 10 feet from you. This object can be no larger than 3 feet on a side and weigh no more than 10 pounds, and its form must be that of a non-magical object that you have seen. The object is visibly magical, radiating dim light out to 5 feet. The object disappears after one hour. When you use this feature again, or it takes da or deals any damage. At the sixth level, benign transportation. You can use your action to teleport up to 30 feet to an unoccupied space that you can see. Alternatively, you can choose a space within range that is occupied by a small or medium creature. If that creature is willing, you both teleport, swapping places. Once you use this feature, you can't use it again until you finish a long rest or you cast a conjuration spell a first level or higher. Um, the good thing about benign transportation is this also allows you to switch places if you summon a medium creature. So if you get any um, medium creatures with your summons and something's attacking you, you can use your action to switch places with one of your creatures. At the 10th level, focus conjuration. While you are concentrating on a concentration spell, our conjuration spell, your concentration, can't be broken as a result of taking damage. Very useful for this build. At the 14th level, durable summons. Any creature that you summon or create with a conjuration spell has 30 temporary hit points. So for our skills, arcana, history, investigation, nature, insight, medicine, perception, survival. 
So far as background, Sage, Hermit, Outlander. So far as saves, Intelligence and Wisdom, we pick up from choosing the Druid at the first levels. So far as stats, um, I'm going to want to put all, all of our points into Intelligence since that's going to be the, the majority of our, our spell pool. Um, some into Wisdom, and uh, at the next after Intelligence we're going to want to go Dexterity for the Armor class. So far as spells, um, for cantrips, Druidcraft, Frostbite, Guidance, Gust. Um, I also highlighted Infestation. I know this is not a good cantrip, but um, the ability to pick a bug off of somewhere and then use it to damage somebody with a bug user just sounds like fun to me. Next for cantrips, Magic Stone, Mending, Mold Earth, Poison Spray, Primal Savagery. Um, Primal Savagery would probably also go along good with this build. You could make uh, um, some kind, I know you attack with like fangs or claws and things like that, but uh, you could probably uh, flavor it to match um, some kind of uh, bug attack. Shillelagh, Thunderclap, Acid Splash, and that's also mis mimics bugs. Chill Touch, Fire Bolt, Frostbite, Light. You definitely want to take a Light Cantrip because I don't think the gift get a uh, um, get Dark Vision. Lightning Lure, Mending, Message, Prestidigitation. Ray of Frost, Shocking Grass, Thunderclap, Toll the Dead. Now that we're getting the first level spells, R stands for Rituals and C stands for Concentration Spells. Um, we're going to... Uh, Look over Absorb Elements, Animal Friendship, Beast Bond, Cure Wounds, Detect Magic, Earth Tremor, Entangle, Goodberry, Healing Word, Jump, Thunder Wave, Burning Hands, Catapult, Chromatic Orb. Um, chromatic Orb could also be come in handy if you flavor it as like some kind of acid um, damage. Comprehend Languages, Find Familiar, and um, you could also uh, flavor a Bug Familiar. Identify. Mage armor, you definitely want to, uh, must take mage armor and shield. Um, this is your bread and butter for defense, and uh, um, um, you're not going to have a lot of defense until you get um, conjure animals to the fifth level. So I would definitely take these two. Magic missile, sleep, snare, Tasha's hideous laughter. For the second level, animal messenger, beast sense, dark vision. Earthbind, Healing Spirit. Healing Spirit is definitely good for um, after combat healing. Heat Metal, Hold Person, Lesser Restoration. Locate Animal or Plants. Um, that could come along really good for the theme of this build if you wanted to find insects. Locate Object, Moonbeam, Pass Without Trace, Alter Self, Blindness, Deafness, Blur, Crown of Madness, Darkness, Dragon's Breath, and Earthbind. Enlarge, Reduce, Flaming Spear, Gust of Wind, Invisibility, Maximilian's Earth and Grass, Melf's Acid Arrow. Pretty sure you could probably um, flavor that into some kind of, instead of just an arrow, it's some kind of blob of acid, because you could be an acid-spitting bug. Mirror Image, Mind Spike, Misty Step. Definitely probably want to take Misty Step at some point. Phantasmal Force, Scorching Ray, Sea Invisibility, Shatter. Ah, Spider Climb definitely goes along with the theme of the build. Suggestion, web, definitely want to take web at some point. Third level, call lightning, conjure animal, we finally get to the bread and the butter of this build. Daylight, dispel magic, erupting earth, feign death, probably not going to take feign death, but flame arrows, meld into stone, plant growth, protection from energy, sleet storm, speak with the plants, Tidal Wave, Wall of Water, Bestow Curse, Blink, Counterspell, def definitely want to probably take Counterspell. Fear, Fireball, Fly, Haste, Fly goes along really good with this build. Hypnotic Pattern, Lehman's Tiny Hut, Life Transference, Lightning Bolt, Non-Detection, Phantom Steed, Remove Curse, Sleet Storm, Slow, Stinking Cloud. Stinking Cloud could definitely be like a gas throwing bug too. Thunderstep, Tidal Wave, Tongues, Vampiric Touch, that, you, that makes you, gives you the whole mosquito feel with van, Vampiric Touch. Um, Wall of Sand for the fourth level, Arcane Eye, Banishment, Blight, um, Charm Monster, Confusion, Dimension Door, Elemental Bane, Fire Shield, Greater Invisibility, Ice Storm, 
locate creature. Mordekainen's Faithful Hound, Mordekainen's uh, Private Sanctum, Phantasmal Killer, Polymorph. Polymorph would definitely be a good choice. Turn peep other people into bugs. Stone Shape, Stone Skin, Storm Sphere, Wall of Fire, and Watery Sphere. For the fifth level, Bigby's Hand, Cloud Kill, Stone Cone of Cold, um, Contact Other Plane, Control Winds. Dawn, Dominate Person, Far Step, Gaius, Hold Monster, Immolation, Legend Lore, Mislead, Modified Memory, Passwall, Planar Binding, Scrying, Seeming, Skill Empowerment, Steel Wind Strike is definitely a, a good uh, um, flavor spell to deal damage. Synaptic Static, Telekinesis, Teleportation Circle. Transmute Rock, Wall of Force, Wall of Light, Wall of Stone. At the 6th level, Arcane Gate, Chain Lightning, Contingency, Create Homoculus, Disintegrate, Eye Bite, Flesh to Stone, Guards and Wards, Instant Summons, um, Investiture of Flame, Investiture of Ice, Magic Jar, Mass Suggestion, Mental Prisons, Scatter, Soul Cades, Sunbeam, True Seeing, and Wall of Ice. Um, for the seventh level, this is where we stopped with our spells since we took so many points into Druid. Crown of Stars, Delayed Blast Fireball, Finger of Death, Force Cage, Mordekainen's Magnificent Mansion. That would be fun having a bug themed mansion. Um, Plane Shift, Power Word Pain, um, Reverse Gravity, Sequester, and Teleport. So far as feats, since you're going to be doing a lot of summoning and you have the concentration spells, um, Resilient Constitution, which gives you it allows you to add your proficiency bonus to con saves, and then Warcaster, which allows you to have advantage on those rolls. So far as equipment, wands, um, figurine of wondrous power, the ebony fly. I'm um, being able to get a fly to ride around on uh, just sounds fun. I know it's a rare item, but uh, uh, eventually, hopefully, you could pick one up with this build. So far as flavor, a, a researcher and explorer or scholar. Now we get into build tactics. Um, this is the table that I made for the conjure animals. Now, um, what you would do is you would roll a d12. Whatever you rolled on the d12 is what animal you're going to get. So if you rolled, um, if you have 8 CR 1 fourth, you would roll 8 d12, and whatever number comes up, that's whatever you summon. The DM doesn't have to um, keep up with it. And I flavored each one of the animals that they were originally, uh, what they were originally, and what I flavored them to so that I could keep up with it. And I'll end up making stat blocks and everything else for them later. Um, so far as ground, um, ground creatures, instead of an axe beak, um, we have an axe beetle. If we roll a one, if we roll a two, instead of a boar, we have a giant boar beetle. Um, instead of three, um, you get a uh, constrictor snake or giant constrictor millipede is what I flavored it as. Instead of a riding horse, you get a giant riding beetle. And instead of an elk, I get a giant stag beetle. Instead of a giant bazard for six, I get a, a badger pseudoscorpion. Um, for, if I roll a 7, instead of, I get a giant centipede. And for an 8, instead of a giant lizard, I get a giant leaf bug. If I roll a 9, instead of a giant poisonous snake, I get a giant poisonous millipede. And if I roll a 10, I get a giant wolf spider. An 11, uh, instead of a panther, I get a giant panther beetle. And uh, inst if I roll a 12, instead of a wolf, I gain a giant wolf ant. Now notice how um, I pick something that usually hunts in packs, the ants, and uh, that would use pack tactics against a target. Um, I tried to flavor the, the animals to match similarly with the abilities that the creature has. Um, so far as flying, I would take the d12s and I would roll them, and for odds I would get a giant owl, or I flavored the giant owl as a giant owl mantis. And uh, if I rolled evens instead of a giant bat, I would get a giant mosquito. So far as aquatic, um, what are, um, the only real aquatic creature that I had was a giant frog, so um, anything you roll for is always going to be a giant frog, so you don't have to roll. For CR 1 half, um, for our ground creatures, instead of war horse, I got a giant war beetle. Um, uh, if I rolled a 2 instead of an ape, I'd get an ape manis. Um, for 3, instead of a black bear, I'd get a giant black pseudoscorpion. Um, 
four of these, since this is D6, we only get six choices. If I roll a four instead of a giant goat, I'd get a giant mountain beetle. Um, if I rolled a five instead of a crocodile, I'd get a giant helgramite. And if I rolled a six, I would get swarms of insects. Um, so far as flying, the only thing, the only choice for flying is a giant wasp. So um, that's the only thing summoned whenever I get really high up. Um, so far as aquatic, if I roll odds, I get a reef shark, but I flavored that as a giant water bug. And uh, so far as aquatic, if I roll evens, if I, I get a giant seahorse, which I flavored as a giant paddle bug. For CR1, um, instead of a, if I roll a 1, I get a giant spider. 2, a dire wolf that I flavored a giant dire ant. Um, 3, a giant hyena, which I get a giant carrion ant. 4, a lion or a giant lion mantis. Um, 5, a brown bear, but I flavored it as a giant brown whoop scorpion. Um, if I roll a 6, it's... Um, instead of a tiger, I get a giant tiger mantis. For flying odds, I get an eagle or a giant eagle dragonfly, evens. Um, I get a giant vulture, which I flavored as a giant carrion beetle. So far as aquatic, um, odds for a giant toad. Um, I flavored it as a giant blood leech because that's about the only bug that I can think of that actually swallows things. Um, so far as evens, um, instead of a giant octopus, I did a giant tube worm. For CR2, um, we roll another D6 for um, flying. We don't have any in that category. And for aquatic, instead of a hunter shark, I put a hunter water beetle. Um, for CR2, for ground, for one, we, instead of a giant boar, I get a huge boar beetle. Um, if I roll a two instead of a giant elk, I get a huge stag beetle. If I roll a three instead of a giant constrictor snake, I get a huge constrictor millipede. Um, if I roll a four instead of polar bear, I get a giant polar bug. If I roll a five instead of a rhinoceros, I get a giant rhinoceros beetle. And if I roll a six um, instead of a saber tooth tiger, I get a giant tiger beetle. All right, guys. Um, I just wanted to show you this build because I wanted to show you the ways in which you can flavor things um, to make these theme builds, but to, uh, to still follow along with the rules of the game. And so, um, basically, this makes it the easiest that I can for the DM. Um, generally, I'm not going to summon more than eight or twelve creatures on the field on the battlefield at one time, so that I'm not messing up the the action economy of the game and making each round take so many turns that it'll take three turns to finish one combat. And um, while also maintaining a fair whatever I summon, I just I, I like the fact of just roll it. Whatever comes up on the chart, that's what I get. Nobody has to choose. Um, it's quick and easy for the DM. It's quick and easy for me. And um, I got to flavor um, the summoning creatures to meet the, the theme of the build without breaking anything. So I think this is one of the best things about D&D is the ability to flavor um, anything in the game as something else as long as you keep the same stats and all of the things with it and um, you could flavor whatever you wanted to as well if you wanted to be a bat summoner and have a bunch of different kinds of bats or other things or you have just a, a, a ground only species of bat and have them ground bats I mean as long as it doesn't break the game and it's uh, you can flavor anything in the game as something else so all right, don't forget to like and subscribe. If there's any builds that any of you guys would like to see, please don't forget to leave it in the comments, and I will see you guys later.